Welcome back to uh, Victory Woodworks with Vic. I'm Vic. Uh, today what we're going to do for our first real CNC uh, project is uh, we're going to do a set of CNC hold downs. So please stay tuned and I hope you enjoyed the video. We're going to uh, first design in Carbide Create uh, and then we're going to actually show you the cutouts. Uh, and uh, I put in a little agenda for us what we're going to do today. So first uh, step zero, we're going to set up the job. Uh, then we're going to create a rectangle, the actual uh, hold down. We're going to fillet the corners. I should say fillet, not fillet, because we're not going to eat them. Uh, we're going to create the hold down tongue. You'll see what I mean later. Uh, create the uh, screw slot. Uh, create all the tool pads. Make multiple copies. Then we're going to save out the G code and we're going to cut it out. Okay, step zero is setting up the Carbide Create settings. So what we're going to do here is going to click on the background, hit the setup, we're going to do the job setup. So the plywood I'm using is half inch or 12 millimeter, I believe. Uh, it's 16 inches wide, 11 and a half, uh, 11 and three quarter inches width, a uh, height, although it doesn't sound like it's high, it should be whatever, width and length. Uh, standard model resolution, thickness is 0.48 measured uh, the zero height is going to be at the top I'm going to use the top left corner as R0 uh, and then the rest of the job it's, it's soft wood uh, ship poco 4 and 0.5 retract height and all units going to be in inches uh, 2 inches by 6 inches uh, it seems to be the right size clamp for the table we have uh, so let me, let me do that so width, two inches, height, six inches. Hit return. Here's the outside of our hold down. Uh, fillet the corners, and we need to create the tongue. So to fillet the corners, we just select the, the uh, rectangle. And hit fillet. The size of the fillet is gonna be a 0.5 radius. Now, what we want to do is create like a little depression here, a cutout, so that if it sits on top of the piece, that it would um, basically push up against it and push down against it. So to do that, we're going to create another. Goes in here, which is going to be basically uh, a cutout to push up against the stock and push down against the stock. So to do that, we're going to need several tools or blocks. These are also going to be two inches wide by one inch. And we're going to fill it the edges on this one. And then we're going to create another one. Oops, that's probably a little bit bigger than we need. We're going to overlap it, but we don't need it that big. We only need 0.5 inches. We're going to overlay this. And now if we group this via the Boolean union, uh, we would not have a little handle to be able to attach it. So what I like to do is grab the piece, bring it up here, and then union it so we have the piece. Now we've got this, this little tongue area. Okay, next is we're gonna do the, the, screw, the screw slot. Using quarter 20 bolts. So what we'll do is we'll create a screw slot that's just over a quarter inch. And let's put it here and see what it looks like. Oh, that's perfect. Right there, so half inch by four inch. Okay, step five is create the tool paths for all of our cutouts. So we'll go over to tool path, uh, path, and let's uh, let's delete these. Start all over. So here you can see I've already created these tool paths, and what we're using is the SPE tool 
4013, which is the spiral plunge, stepping over a tenth, depth of paths is tenth, and then the standardized uh, feeds and speeds. Um, and we're going to go down 0.2, so we're cutting out this area for 0.2. Let's see what that looks like. Let's disable these for right now. Show the simulation. Okay, let's try that again. Let's delete these and start all over. Delete, delete, and delete. So we're going to select the area which we'd like to cut out the tongue. We need a pocket. Use the current selection. We're going to go down point two. Well, actually, let's start with the bit. We're using the SPE tool 4013 spiral quarter inch plunge standard feeds and speeds um, it's already spiraling out for us and we only want to go down 0.2 and we'll call this pump okay now let's see what that looks like there you go starting to see what the this is going to look like overall next since we're plunging through, we'd like to keep the, the work um, held down as firmly as possible. We're going to cut out the screw hole. Same thing. Again, quarter inch. We're going to go all the way to stock bottom, which is 0.48. We'll call this screw slot. We'll OK that. Show the simulation. See, it's cut all the way through. Now, what I noticed. Um, we came back here is we don't have any tabs yet, but we'll do that in a second. So let's select the outside and we're going to do a contour pass using the same bit. We're going to go all the way to stock bottom and we're going to do it on the outside. Uh, just showing the same bit all the way through. And we're going to call this cutout. See what that looks like. Okay, let's see. There are no tabs. So let's go back to our design and add a few tabs. Here's the tab button. So we'll add a tab at the top, the bottom. Uh, that should probably, uh, we'll add one in the middle. Okay, let's go back to our paths, show our simulation. Now you can see the tabs are in, although they're huge. So let's, let's make them smaller. I like 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Those seem to be about right. Let's hit OK. OK, step six is uh, copy the design and create more than one. Well, you have a CNC after all, so you can repeat all the cuts that we've just done with little or no effort. So why don't we just copy our design here and see how many of these we can get on onto uh, this board. Let's, let's move this up out of the way. And we don't want this, whoops, really close to the edge. I like to keep like a half inch at least from the edge. snap to there and I like to keep three quarters between the items so that seems to be about right and I don't believe we'll fit one in there yeah, too much but what we can do is rotate this 90 and create a second one there we go okay let's see what these tool pads will look like now Fasts. 
let's do these one at a time and see if it's going to do what we expect it to do. So, cut out all the tongues. That looks right. Cut out all the screw slots, starting here, kind of going around. And then let's see if the cutouts happen appropriately. Cutouts with all the tabs, everything looks to be good. All right, so let's enable all of these. Do our do our final step. Which is save the G code and, and go to cut. Okay, here's our stock. Let's measure it up, make sure we've got the uh, right dimensions here. Should be 0.48. Yeah, it looks like it is. This is the, uh, the double-sided tape I use. I happen to like this one the best. I believe it's called Tavon. I got it on Amazon. And what I'll do is I'll add a little link to, uh, to the video if you're interested in purchasing. Do not use this tape. This tape I got at Home Depot. It's incredibly sticky, does not hold all that well, and it's very hard to get off of anything, anything you stick it to. So toss that away. Okay, we just laid in the stock. We're screwing down the hole downs. Hmm, that, that far right hand corner seems like it might be a little loose. We're touching off the probe, zeroing out the CNC. On that far corner, I definitely put down another hole down because it was a little loose. It wasn't, I think it was the plywood, it was just a little warped out. Okay, let's get Sweepy loaded onto the router. Let's do the carbide create touch off, or actually carbide motion touch off. Turn on the spindle. And get cut.
Okay, you can see the piece here. And you can see the mistake I made. Uh, it was 0.25 diameter, not radius. Here's the piece cleaned up. Looks okay, except for the fact that the uh, screw slot is twice as big as it needs to be. Hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did, please hit the like button, subscribe, tell your friends, and join me for the next one.